we are going to be on page 70 for graph gram, meaning to write. Make sure you've got your pen or pencil and your highlighter. Let's look at the top. We don't usually think of geography as having anything to do with writing, but it is made up of geo, earth, and graph to write, and is actually a writing about the surface of the earth. Note how each of the following words has something to do with writing. Our first word is calligraphy. It is a noun that comes from the roots cali meaning beautiful and graph meaning to write. So pretty simply, beautiful writing, the art of fine handwriting. Let's take a look at some. Here you'll see this person's using what just appears to be a black marker, but they're using it in a way that allows it, because of the way the edges are, it creates thin and thick parts of the letters. So this is actually a word, but it's done in very fancy writing. So fine handwriting. In our sentence, she copied a favorite poem in beautiful calligraphy and had it framed. So this I think would be worthy of having framed, don't you think? Our next word is cardiogram. It comes from the roots card meaning heart and gram meaning to write. So something written about the heart, right? In fact, it is a noun, a written tracing showing the contractions of the heart. And we're gonna see an actual cardiogram in action. So there it is. See, see each of those little things is a heartbeat. And then up here it's telling us how quickly, what the per minutes is. The cardiogram showed a few extra heartbeats. Well, that's weird, right? Next we have choreography, from the roots core meaning dance, and graph meaning to write. So writing about dance somehow, right? In this case, specifically, it's the creating and arranging of dance movements, especially ballet. You're like, Miss Taylor, you don't have to write that down, so why is graph in there? Well, I mean, you don't have to, but if you want other people to be able to put it together, you would have to have it written out somehow, right? So that's the idea. And let's hear a little bit about Sesame Street's version of choreography. But Elmo and Miss Melissa have to tell everyone today's word. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. Let's tell them the word. Okay, today's word is choreographer. <laughs> now, choreographer is someone who puts together a dance or makes a dance move. Mm -hmm. I just, I just wish that there was a choreographer around and they could make up a dance for us to do. So they're talking about the person, the choreographer who puts the dance together. And the putting the dance together part is the choreography, right? The director of the opera also did the choreography. They also designed all of the dance movements. Ethogram, from the roots, epi meaning on and gram meaning to write. It is a noun, any short, witty saying. Um, the first thing I thought of when I saw this was what y'all like to post, um, especially young ladies. We see those pictures with like the text on top. Um, so that kind of reminds me of an epigram. But this is important, this witty part. So in some way it has to be clever, right? Um, in some way it has to be maybe a little bit funny or something. So I chose one of my favorite writers to look at epigrams from. So we have Oscar Wilde. He said, women are made to be loved, not understood, which I thought was kind of funny, right? Or he also had the epigram, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. So those would be epigrams, short, witty sayings. The idea being that they would be written on something. In this case, I put it on a picture, right? She liked to quote the epigram, success is getting what you want. Happiness is wanting what you get. Our next word is geography, which we looked at in the introduction. From there, it's geo meaning earth and graph meaning to write. It is a noun, and it is a science dealing with the earth and its life. Geography was my favorite subject in grade school. So you'll see here's the earth, right? And graffiti. Graffiti is a noun. It doesn't have any special roots in it. I mean, it obviously has graph gram, but uh, it doesn't have any other roots. And it, the, the definition here is crude drawings or writings scratched on public walls. I am not going to argue 
that that is an incorrect definition. It isn't, but I don't think it's complete. I think that's just one definition. So we talk a lot now about graffiti as art. So I think the difference here is whether it's graffiti or vandalism. So vandalism is something that's done without permission, right? It's something where you um, in some way damage something or, or mess it up without asking the people who own it. Um, this guy right here is Mario Gonzo. Um, he is actually a graffiti artist in Houston. He's sitting here in front of a piece he did called City Life. Um, but the reason I bring him up, Mario Gonzo, is because, hold on, let me switch. Um, if you look here, this is actually um, the student newspaper at St. John's School where ISAS, that a lot of the upper schoolers were at, was hosted this past weekend. And he, who goes, he also goes by Gonzo 24 seven or 247, right? Um, he actually facilitated students creating a graffiti wall that said by you for the fact that ISAS was at, uh, in Houston, at just St. John's this week. So um, he talks about graffiti as art. So I really, the reason I bring this up is I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this particular definition of graffiti. I think it is one definition. Oh, I got moved. Whoops. But it's not the only one. So in this case, this is the definition we're gonna go with, but be aware it's not the only definition for graffiti. Um, graffiti is also a style. It's really super stylized. Like this says city life. There's the C-I-T-Y-L-I-F-E, right? But it's a very stylized, colorful, um, visually interesting art form in addition to being people scratching things on public walls that they're not supposed to, right? All right, we also have graphic. So graphic, no extra roots here, right, just to write. Um, it is an adjective and it means full of vivid details. Now there are other meanings for this word sometimes. Um, we talk about it in other ways, but the definition we're looking at this way specifically looks at the words that you use, full of vivid details. So, and it could be in a picture also, there could be vivid details. A lot of what we talk about as being graphic images though is in a really negative way. It has a negative connotation, like as in it is in some way inappropriate. That's what makes it graphic. But let's look at something that is not graphic in that way, but just full of vivid details. The most vivid and unique. I popped up, my feet gripping the tacky board. A grin wider than the horizon splashed across my face. A wild power from the ocean and from within me foamed up as I let out a long and loony whoop. Any English teacher in the world would say that this is showing not. So this is actually an instructional video from a teacher he made for his students, and this is the final example, the best example of, um, of vivid language and graphic details. So you'll see here we have some literary tools being used, like similes and metaphors, right? Um, we have great diction. We have a lot of positive energy happening here that's, that, that's influenced by the diction. Popped up, grin wider than the horizon, splashed, right? Um, this is a great example of vivid diction. Let's look at how it's, that word graphic is used in our sentence. The author gave a graphic description of the earthquake. So this is a graphic description of someone who is surfing, right? Hologram, from the roots hollow meaning whole and gram meaning to write. So to write the whole, and it means, it's a noun, it means a three-dimensional graphic made using lasers. We actually saw this um, during last election because uh, CNN had a hologram happening live on TV. They were the first people to do it live on television, I believe. And um, we're gonna look just at a few seconds of this broadcast because they talk about how it's created. High definition cameras ringing me. Uh, in a ring around me, I'm in the center, and they shoot my body at different angles, and I'm told that transmits what looks like an entire body image back there to New York. Uh, these cameras, I'm told, talk to the cameras in New York, so they move, and they know when to move when the cameras in New York move, and uh, it looks a little different from a real person there, but it's pretty remarkable. It's still Jessica Yellen, uh, and you look like Jessica Yellen, and we know you are <laughs> Jessica Yellen. Let's get back. So you can see here, see the blue outline is kind of one of the signs that it's not really her standing there, it's a hologram of her. So they're projecting her three-dimensionally in the middle of the room at one studio while she's actually standing in a studio in another part of the country, which is pretty cool, right? So here's our sentence. The cover of the National Geographic for December 1988 was a hologram. All right. 
right, then we have monograph, monogram, excuse me, I almost said that wrong. Monogram from the roots mono meaning one and gram meaning to write. So it is a noun about one thing written together. In this case, it's taking two or more letters and entwining them into one design. I think you guys are probably pretty familiar with the monogram. We have a lot of them around here. But let's take a look at maybe some different ones. So you'll see here the idea that it's visually interesting, right? Here we have an M and a C. Here we have a K and a G. Okay, a D and an R. So it's one design, but it has multiple letters inside. That's a monogram. And then we have monograph. Again, the same roots. Mono meaning one, graph meaning to write. Um, it's a writing about one thing. So a noun, it's a noun, a book written about one specific subject. I'm going to tell you a secret. Most monographs look really boring from what I could find. Um, they tend to be more like academic papers and stuff. Uh, so I was trying to think of an example of a monograph I was familiar with that would be more visually interesting. There's actually a series of books called A Very Short Introduction. And they're these little tiny books and each of them has one topic and the whole book is about that one thing. So this book is only about relativity and this one is only about the Supreme Court and this one is only about the Trojan War. So it's a book written about one specific subject or a monograph. In our sentence, she published a monograph about the biblical references in Browning's poems. So see how specific that is? It has to be a very, very specific subject to be a monograph. Then we have a seismograph from the roots seismos, meaning earthquake, and graph, meaning to write. So literally an instrument for recording the intensity and duration of an earthquake. It writes about earthquakes. It is a noun. Here's our sentence. The seismograph recorded an earthquake that registered seven on the Richter scale. Oh my. And let's take a look at, this is going to show us the reading, the seismograph reading. What it looked like from a seismograph at Hawk State Park east of Rogers. So this Rogers. is the part that's written. It was just as written. last month, by the way. The U.S. Geological oh, Survey says the earthquake measure. So here, the, the instrument itself is the seismograph, and this is what it records. So you see right here where it gets really big? It's just a pin, and it shakes as the earth does. So you can see like little movements in the earth. And then here, where it gets really, really big, that's where the earthquake happened. Interesting, right? And then we have topography. So we have the root top meaning place and graph to write. So writing about a place, it's a noun, a detailed drawing on a map of the surface features of a region showing relative positions and elevations. So if you look here, this is a topographical map. You see the red is the outlines of the, the countries or states, right? And then this is our key and it tells us how high the elevation is, right? The surface features are. So the green is zero, that's like sea level. And then you see as it gets higher, it gets darker and darker, and then eventually it even turns white, kind of like the snow at the very top of a mountain. So this shows us like down here would be a valley, and then here we have higher elevations like hills maybe turning into maybe mountains, okay? By before venturing into the canyon, the hikers studied its topography. Probably a good idea. You wanna know what you're getting into if you're gonna go hiking, huh? All right, you are responsible for your exercises and your Kia. Make sure you study hard. Look over all the old roots and all of this week's words and roots. Okie doke, good luck.